it's Jan Peter, and the video I originally wanted to post today isn't finished yet. There were some issues with video encoding and editing software and stuff like that, so um, I'm really sorry about that. It's gonna take a bit before I can post the video I wanted to post today. Uh, I have some videos prepared. I think I have three videos or something in the queue, but they are not ready yet because I have to do uh, another big video before they can be published. So um, I thought, as it is, August is Commodore 64 month. So I thought, why not sneak in a quick Commodore 64 repair? Hopefully quick. Uh, this <laughs> is a very nice looking black uh, spray painted Commodore 64, which was donated to me by Scoozy. Um, thank you very much, sir. This was donated to me a while back when I still was in the old flat and stuff like that. So this was sitting here waiting to be repaired for a while. So I don't know. I, I remember there's something wrong with it. I don't really remember what it was. So let's check it out together. So the first thing I want to do is to open this up and see if we can see anything broken. And it's only closed with one screw, I believe. Yep. Let's see. I'm not a huge fan of these um, paint jobs on old cases in general. There are some exceptions. Uh, recently I saw Miss Matt Lemon the, she painted uh, her Amiga 1200 in a very, very funky um, metallic blue, which looks amazing. So um, check that video out. That's or it's it's a whole series of videos. I'm gonna link the first part in. Um, yeah, she did an amazing job. So that that's one exception. Normally, I prefer the um, as close to the original color as it gets um, for these cases, especially for the Commodore 64. One thing I realize is that there's a lot of socketed chips on here. So these are all socketed. This is uh, socketed. This is socketed. This is a PLA. The SID processor, uh, the ROMs, the CIA chips, the um, I.O. interface chips. This is the VIC-2 graphics chip, little timer chip, um, RAM and supporting logic mostly for the RAM and the um, switching uh, for the lines coming from the PLA. Uh, yeah, this all looks... There's nothing to see on first glance uh, that is broken. Nothing immediately uh, pops up that I can see. So I think what I'm going to do is to just uh, power this on and see. Okay, here we go. Hold on, hold on, I just saw something and uh, I'm going to link to a video. You might remember something about this that I told you in a previous video. So before I power this on, let's zoom in. Okay, so you might remember from the other video that there are different versions of the VIC-2 chip. This is the 8565, which is the newer version of the VIC-2 that uses different voltages and that this uses only 5 volt, volt, uh, five volt uh, input and not the 12 volts that the old one uses. So this has two 5 volt inputs and the old one has a 12 volt in input which this board as it is an old long board 250425 uh, which is uh, a later revision of the long board. Uh, this board provides through this little thing, which is an 7812 voltage regulator that provides 12 volts for this chip and for the SID chip. So this gets 12 volts, but so really should be getting 5 volts, so, so this will definitely uh, damage the chip if you turn it on for too long. I think it can take it for a short while, but uh, not forever. So let's see if I can find a VIC-2 to replace this with, with an old VIC-2. And as it so happens, I happen to have one. I think this is the one from the video I linked in previously uh, that I had to get out of the 
shortboard. There was there was a, an old Vic 2 in the shortboard that didn't get enough uh, juice to power on at all, which resulted in the Commodore 64 having a black screen or outputting a black screen. So let's see if I can just rip this out. A little, yes, I can. And have my ESD strap on for you ESD aficionados out there. Everybody should be an ESD aficionado. I actually bought an ESD safe uh, mat today because these uh, cutting mats are not ESD safe at all. They are better than nothing, I suppose, but they are not uh, grounded or anything. And I just bought a, a real anti-static uh, ESD mat that you can uh, connect to ground on your bench and really work on. So that's going to be uh, featured in, in the next in one of the next videos, I guess. I made a few uh, with this still as the background. So the whole appearance of the channel is going to change drastically because the new mat is gray. <laughs> But I don't, I don't know, maybe I will lay this on top there if I don't have anything uh, electrostatically sensitive. So, okay, long story short, this goes in here. Seems to be quite accurate because the other chips, this is from the 47th week of 84. The other chips are all from 1984, so this will feel at home in this, hopefully. Let's see what it does. Okay, I checked the other chips in there. Don't seem to be any uh, other generation conflicts. <laughs> so let's see what it does. We have it connected to a little video converter which goes into the monitor. Let's turn it on. Okay, there we go. That was kind of easy. <laughs> it seems to work. Picture's a little bit fuzzy, I guess. But. This could use some new caps, obviously, but otherwise it seems to work. Nice! Okay, so this concludes this video. Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a closer look at this and run a diagnostics cartridge, I guess. Let's see. Okay, so I put in my uh, Doctor 64 diagnostics card. Oh, and it's not working correctly. So this is, a, there was, um, you saw a very garbled screen, normally it would output text and similar to the other diagnostics cards, it would uh, display things like uh, the RAM and test stuff and uh, display if everything works correctly or if there's a fault. Um, so this obviously didn't work very well, it might just be a dirty cartridge slot, which is pretty common, especially if the machines look uh, a bit dirty from the outside, which this one didn't really, but it looked as if it was stored in the basement for some time. So let's clean out the cartridge port. So what I usually do is just grab a can of contact cleaner and spray some in there generously and then scrub it in this case with my anti-aesthetic brush. So I reinserted the cartridge and while it's off I'm just pulling it out and wiggling a bit and um, to scrape the contacts a little bit. Now let's see what it does, if it works. Yeah, there we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Let's see if it passes the tests. And everything you see that is bad on this test uh, really has to do with... Normally you would connect loopback cables for this test to um, test the ports and stuff. I don't have them! I didn't make any yet. So... But the RAM test works, the RAM, the ROM test... Yeah, it seems to be a working Commodore 64. This might just become my uh, test board. So... There are a lot of sockets in there already and I might just uh, socket the other chips as well to be able to swap chips really quickly. Which would make this a very handy tool for uh, future Commodore 64 repairs. So here's the, the classic diagnostics. Let's see if this one passes through. 
Yeah, and again, this uh, diagnostics cartridge is made to be used with a harness of loopback cables and connectors that I don't have connected, so it's displaying bad for uh, some of the chips. Sorry for the crappy sound, by the way. Uh, this is not connected to the good speakers at the moment, but to the speakers inside the monitor, which are tiny, of course, and sound like... Uh, it might sound like the sit is broken this, but it's it seems to be perfectly fine. So let's try a game, I guess. <laughs> so I now have connected my SD to IC, which is one of these. There are better ones that come with a case and stuff like that. This is a pretty old one I made from a kit that I bought from a German seller that doesn't exist anymore because he went, went ban bankrupt. Um, this is my final cartridge. I want to use that for fast loading. This is compatible with the SD to IC. So this will speed up the loading process. So let's see what game I want to play. I should maybe connect the keyboard back so I can load a game. Didn't think of that. <laughs> By the way, did you know that the Commodore 64 has a very nice uh, wrong polarity protection for the power LED? This is a 3-pin plug and this is a 3-pin pin header. So this really is a drag, but uh, you get the point. So uh, there's only two wires connected. The middle is ground. The left in this case is the positive. So you can turn this around. And the outer side is always positive and the middle is always ground. And guess what these pins are. <laughs> Both the side pins are positive and the middle pin is ground. So no matter in which direction you connect this, it's always going to be connected the right way around. Pretty clever, huh? Maybe this, this is going to be my punk rock Commodore 64. I don't, know. don't really know what I should think of the, the looks. There's too many great games I never can decide. Oh, let's play, play a bit of Up and Down. I love Up and Down. Up and Down is crazy good. I <laughs> just love the music. <laughs> okay. Okay. Action button to start. My action button is a bit bored at the moment. That's the only thing that breaks with these uh, Tech 2 joysticks. So this game you have to, you can jump over cars, you have to collect the the little um, flags in all the colors and you can basically, you can jump on cars and you get quite some points for that. You can jump over cars and uh, you can accelerate and decelerate and there's these uh, streets that are a loop basically, so you get to the beginning again and must take the right turns to find all the colors of the flags. Which is, I think, something that uh, influenced Buggy Boy, for example. Because that's you have the flag thing there too. So anyway, um, I'm gonna play some up and down. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to support me, check out my Patreon page. You can donate some monthly money there to support my work. Uh, there's also a PayPal donation link somewhere in the description still. And if you don't want to give me your money, which I appreciate too, you might as well just give me a thumbs up or subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so or recommend me to your friends or yeah, basically just do whatever you want. I'm happy if you check out my videos. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm Abita. See you next time. Bye. That's the red flag and now I need the green flag and then I'm done with the level. There it is. Yay! <laughs> no bonus. <laughs>